Hi everyone, I'm Carmen from the Featherweight Shop. Today we're going to be revisiting one of our oldest and most popular videos, a thread jam in your Singer Featherweight. Now it's one of our most popular videos because thread jams are, can be fairly common. Uh, so we're going to address how to keep those from happening and then also how to fix it as well. And the old video, just the quality, it's a little bit hard to see. And so we're going to redo that. I hope you'll find it helpful. First of all, a thread jam often occurs for two major um, reasons. The first one being not holding your thread tails when you start to sew. If you'll hold these, that'll keep the thread from getting pulled back behind the bobbin case base assembly, which is where the thread jam occurs. And then the other is turning the hand wheel the wrong direction. The hand wheel on a Singer Featherweight should always turn counterclockwise. That's towards the operator. So this machine's turned around backwards for uh, just for the video. But if, if you were sitting there sewing, it would be turning this direction. The hand wheel would be turning counterclockwise or towards you as you sew. The main reason that we see the hand wheel get turned the opposite direction, the way that you're not supposed to, is usually has to do with removing the fabric from underneath your needle uh, and the presser foot when you're when you're finished sewing. So if you if you are sewing and you stop with the needle in the highest point, that seems like the correct time to raise your presser foot and pull the fabric out, but it doesn't want to come, and so we end up wiggling the hand wheel to try to get it to come. The correct time to remove your fabric from underneath the pressure foot is not when the needle is at the highest point, but when your take-up lever is at the highest point. So if we move the take-up lever to the highest point, we have now finished the stitch and the fabric will pull easily out and no more wiggling the hand wheel and no more thread jams. So that covers why those thread jams are usually occurring and if you'll hold the thread tails and also uh, turn the hand wheel only towards you, only towards the operator, we shouldn't have those thread jams anymore. Here I've got a, a Featherweight 221 that has a classic thread jam. The hand wheel is locked up, it means it has uh, thread caught behind the bobbin case base and so the hand wheel is froze, you can't turn, you can't turn it at all. Um, I've taken, as I mentioned, I've taken the bed extension off, I've also taken the foot off and the needle out, and then the next thing you need to do is to take the needle plate off. The needle plate is held on just by two screws, which I've already removed, and then you can lift the needle plate off. Now what often happens is you take the needle plate off, and now the machine will turn freely. And you think, well, I must have gotten that thread jam out by taking the needle plate off. but the issue is that when you put the needle plate back on, when the positioning finger is in the slot here, you, you've locked the machine up again and it won't turn. So our, our problem is that there is thread caught in between the hook assembly and the bobbin case base. And that, like I mentioned before, that's from turning the hand wheel the wrong direction or letting your thread tails get tucked, uh, pulled back in there. So in order to do this, we have to remove this piece here, which is called the bobbin case base, and we have to remove this to get to that, that thread jam. We do this by opening up what's called the gib, and it's held on just by this one screw right here. Now this screw is extremely, it's extremely important that you use a proper screwdriver for this screw, because if this one gets damaged, it's extremely difficult to remove. It's a little tiny screw. We have found that this Vera screwdriver works excellent for that. It's also got a magnetic tip that holds onto it. So we set that aside in a magnetic dish for safekeeping. And then what we need to do is open this gib hook. So when we open this, it's going to pivot out and to the right. And then we should be able to get the bobbin case uh, base out. However, the bobbin case base only comes out in one particular spot, and that is when this finger is directly across from this hole. Now, this one right here, just taking this loose, uh, just opening the gib hook, loosened this enough that I'm going to be able to open it up and get it out of there. However, 
often this is completely jammed in there and you can't get you can't get this bobbin case base moved to the to that point where it's straight across from this hole to where it can be removed so i'm going to show you what to do in that instance if you open up the gib hook but you can't get the bobbin case base to remove our suggestion and we do this a lot is to tip the machine up on end like such and fill this entire hook assembly area with sewing machine oil. And I mean completely fill it up to where it's like puddled in there. And you let it sit overnight and then that will break down the fibers in that thread and you can get, you can get the um, bobbin case base to turn then. Now if you soak this hook assembly in oil and you still cannot get the positioning finger to move, you don't want to use anything like pliers on there, uh, anything metal that can damage this. If you get burrs on this uh, bobbin case base or any place on the hook assembly, it can cause the thread to catch, which is going to give you skipped stitches. We recommend using an old leather glove, and this kind of protects your fingers but allows you to really get some force on here and to be able to turn this. That's if it's still, if it's still stuck. So this one's already had oil soaked on it, so we're going to spin that gib open. If you turn this to where it's not straight across, you're not going to be able to get it to come out. So we turn it to where it's straight across and then pull it right out. And you can see here that that piece of thread back there had this machine completely locked up. Just a little piece like that, and it's often even much smaller than that, will completely lock up your featherweight. Now, it's important to note that if you try to force this with it in the machine, if you try to force it, what we often see is this finger gets broken off, and this is an extremely costly repair. So there's no need to force it. And now we need to put our bobbin case base back in. It goes in the same way as we took it out, and that is with the positioning finger straight across from the gib screw hole. So we're going to put it in like, like that. And, and often these, these take a little bit of wiggling to get them to go in because there's just kind of, there's kind of like a sweet spot and it only goes in in one, in one particular spot. Now, uh, for putting this screw back in here, it's also much easier if you'll tip the machine up on end so that you can uh, center the screw directly over the hole to put it back in there. But that's, that's what you do. Now, once you get that screw put back in there, um, it is extremely important that when you put the needle plate back on that this positioning finger is in that slot. If it's out of that slot, your machine will not sew. So often we you know, get requests where people say, I took my needle plate off to clean the lint out I put it back together and my machine won't sew. So that's a pretty common one. That finger just has to be in there. The screws have to be loose or removed in order to get it there. So these are out. So we're just going to lift it up a little bit and put it back in its spot. So you can see there it's, it's between those, those blocks. And now your machine is ready to go. So make sure you've put your screw back in the hole and put your two needle plate screws in and you should be ready to go. Now I've got one more tip for those of you who have a uh, Featherweight 222. That's the free arm version of the Featherweight. This bed comes off on there and it opens up to this little free arm. This one's a little bit different to get the thread jam out of this one, so we're going to walk you through that as well. The first thing you need to do is to remove the three needle plate screws. I've taken off those three screws and now we're going to remove the needle plate. We set the needle plate aside and now we need to remove the gib screw on this one just like we did on the 221. So now I'm going to show you why the 222 is different than the 221 because the hook assembly is identical. They take the same hook assembly. The issue is that this tiny little free arm here does not allow that gib hook to open up far enough to get the bobbin case base out. It's hitting the edge of the the free arm there. So on this particular machine, what you have to do is to remove the feed dogs and then the hook will open up to the, towards the top. So you'll need to remove the presser foot and the needle. And once those are removed, you need to remove the feed dogs. The feed dogs are held on by just these two screws right here. 
Now the screws are removed and the feed dogs can just be pulled off and set aside. Now with the feed dogs removed, we can open the gib hook up and into the gap where the feed dogs were. And with that out of the way now, we can now move the bobbin case base to where that finger is straight across from the hole, which would be right there. See, it's straight across from that hole, and this should come straight out, and it does. So if you had a thread jam back there, this is how you would get it out of your Featherweight 222. Well, I hope you found that helpful. If you have any questions, send us an email, post a question on Facebook, or pick up the phone and give us a call here at the shop. We're always glad to help. Have a great day.